Welcome to a, another edition of Eye on the Issues, and today we're talking global warming, climate change, green energy, all of the above. And joining us today is one special guest. He is the Professor Emeritus in the Department of Physics at Princeton University. Will Happer, thanks for taking the time to talk to me today. Thank you, Mike. It's a pleasure. <clears throat> so, Will, you know, the whole world is looking around saying, what are we doing with this green energy, climate change? You know, some people obviously believe in it and, and probably many others do not. What is your take on what, what the world's thinking in terms of moving away from fossil fuels because of emissions and whatnot toward wind and, and solar and, and other things? Well, you know, somebody wrote a book about that around 1840. It was called... <laughs> you know, extraordinary popular delusions and the madness of crowds. And so we're seeing an example of that. It's an extraordinary popular delusion and lots of people have gone mad. And it's hard to get out of a situation like that because people, you know, don't want to admit that they were wrong. <laughs> so let, let's begin by talking about, okay, so the, the, the biggest concern is that the warming of the planet. Can you dispel that myth? Well, you know, in a nutshell, it's true that carbon dioxide is increasing and most likely it's due to burning fossil fuels. And uh, and it's also true that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, so it will cause some warming. But the issue is how much. And uh, if you do, you know, the simplest calculations on radiative transfer, and that's something I know a lot about, I've made a career of that, uh, you find that if you double CO2, which would take more than a century, uh, you, you might get 0.7 centigrade warming, less than one degree centigrade warming. You can't even feel that, you know, your air conditioner doesn't trip on or off if you uh, let the temperature of the room go up 0.7 centigrade. So it, it's really a nothing effect. And, uh, you know, the people who really understand the science know that it's a nothing effect. And uh, so they're continually trying to figure out some way to multiply this small warming that's expected by factors of four, five, you know, six. Uh, so the technical name for that is positive feedback. And uh, there are a few things in nature that have positive feedbacks, but most of them are negative, you know, and that's so common that it's even given a fancy name. It's called Le Chatelier's principle, which says that most feedbacks of natural systems are negative. Whatever tries to make a system do one thing, for example, greenhouse gas tries to make the earth a little bit warmer, the earth will do something, you know, to resist that. So it won't get nearly as warm as you think it will because of these negative feedbacks. And that's observed all over nature, you know, it's, it's very, very common. And uh, yet the IPCC, you know, the, the climate establishment claims that there are these enormous positive feedbacks. If you look at the feedbacks and you look around, what, what other thing uh, is there that has that kind of feedback and it's high explosive. So, well, you know, the earth is not a high explosive because there are always perturbations in the climate. And if it were positive feedback, you know, we would have long ago, you know, destroyed the planet, you know. You know, you can't run a stable earth if it's a high explosive, it will sooner or later explode. <laughs> and so it's clearly not a uh, strong positive feedback. It's almost certainly like other normal systems, it's negative. <laughs> so I'd be surprised if the fee, I'd be surprised if the warming from CO2 is even as much as one one degree centigrade. My own guess is it's around a quarter, a quarter, three quarters of a degree centigrade, maybe 0 0.7, 0 0.8 C mm -hmm. from doubling CO2. Good to hear. Now you under President George H. W. Bush, you were the director of energy research in the Department of Energy. So I need to ask you this question. What goes through your mind when you hear um, some leaders in this country come out and say, we want to do away with fossil fuels and move toward, you know, electric cars and solar and all this stuff? What, what, what's your initial reaction to hearing that? 
Well, they all should <laughs> take a course in <laughs> engineering and physics and, you know, how energy is actually provided. If you even half understand that, you recognize you can't go to all renewables. Uh, we're already seeing that any country that's tried to do that uh, or state that's tried to do that, the results have been terrible, especially for the average citizen. Germany, for example, it's losing industry and uh, it's led the way and uh, the economy gets worse every year. And every country that tries to emulate that uh, finds the same thing because, uh, you know, renewables don't work. They're very, very expensive. They're not very reliable. The sun, sun stops shining at night. You, you can have a whole week without wind. <laughs> so it, it's crazy. You know, we used to run the world on wind. You know, we sailed ships across the ocean with uh, wind. And it's very telling that the moment the steam engine was invented that ran on coal, within decades, uh, there were no sailing ships left to speak of, you know, and the sailors were so happy they no longer had to depend on wind. And they used to joke about having a fair wind in the forecastle hold, <laughs> which meant they had a steam engine on the boat. So they didn't need the wind. And so we're, we're just going backwards to something that never worked very well to begin with. And uh, it's, it's also very unjust because uh, high income people will do OK. You know, they invest in green energy. They get uh, rewarded by the Inflation Reduction Act, you know. And who pays? Well, it's the little guy, the average person, you know, they get less and less income. They have to work harder and harder for less reward. And so it's, it's profoundly unjust. It's uh, inverse Robin Hood, you know, rob from the poor to give to the rich. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I, I did a news story a couple of days ago regarding New Hampshire and New Hampshire talking about closing their uh, two, uh, their two last coal fired power plants. Now, they don't even use those plants on much of a regular basis anymore. It's only like when we really need it, like in the summertime mm -hmm. when it's super hot or something along those lines. What, what's your reaction to hearing that? I mean, I mean this, this these plants are, are essentially they're the backup plan. If we need yeah. something, we go to it. But but now they're going to by in the year twenty twenty five they're going to close one. They're going to close the other in twenty twenty eight. Well, they should explain to the citizens of New Hampshire uh, what is their backup plan now if they don't have coal are they planning to build natural gas plants or what because new hampshire is like anywhere else you know the wind stops blowing sometimes and the sun doesn't shine at night ever and it doesn't shine very much in the winter in new hampshire either so i mean they you know it, it's it's crazy you can't you can't uh, maintain society on you know pure wind power pure sustainable energy <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, now, let's talk for a second, if we can, about China. From what I understand, and I don't know all the details on this, but I understand that they have no problem opening uh, coal-fired power plants. In fact, they're doing so, from what I understand, on a rather frequent basis. And they don't care about what's going on in terms of CO2, climate. John Kerry can go talk until he's blue in the face, but they're just going to do what they want to do. What's your impression of what the United States is trying to do and, and how much we've cut back on, on our CO2 versus what China's doing. Well, you, you're touching an important point, and that is that the major emitter of CO2 today is China. They produce more CO2 by far than the U.S. today. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I personally think that China should be rewarded by enriching the world in more CO2. It's making the earth a greener place, it's increasing the yields of crops. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with CO2. Now, the Chinese have also learned that uh, they do need to control real pollution. You know, if you build a coal plant in a sloppy way, you know, you get smoke and you get fly ash. And if you use the wrong kind of coal, you get lots and lots of sulfur and sulfuric acid. So you shouldn't do that, you know, but it has nothing to do with greenhouse gases. It has to do with common sense control of real pollutants. And the Chinese are getting better at that. And uh, and in the process, they're learning a lot. So, for example, if you go around the world today, you see lots of exported Chinese plants, especially in Africa. 
and they're very good cold plants. You know, many of them are ultra super critical where you get very high yields of electricity for coal burnt, you know, more than the average uh, plant in the U.S. And so, so we've given up. So if we had to build a new plant today, we would have to go to China and get them to build it for us because we've lost that ex that basis of, ex of experience. You know, it's it's a terrible thing to lose, you know, a, a skill like that, which is inherent in a country. Once you lose it, you, it takes a long time to get it back. It doesn't come back overnight. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So so what what's your take on the real motivation behind this green energy push? I mean, are, do people really just not get the science and not really understand? Or do you think there's some monetary force behind this? Well, you know, different people have different motives. There are many sincere people. I have friends who uh, believe all of the propaganda that's been shoveled down their throats for many decades now. And, uh, you know, is it how is it possible that, you know, the media that I trust, uh, you know, says that there's a climate crisis and, and they're lying to me? <laughs> yeah, in fact, they are lying to you or they're, they're confused themselves. So they're the sincere people who are misled and brainwashed, and uh, they're trying to save the planet. I don't blame them. If I, if I thought the planet was in danger, I would be with them. But I, I understand how the planet works a lot better than they do. And then there are people who uh, are profiting from it. You know, if you're selling wind turbines, if you're selling solar panels, you're making a lot of money from this. And uh, yeah, the last thing you need is for someone to question that there's an emergency. And then there's my community, you know, we are flooded with money from the federal government and from billionaire do-gooders and even from the states, you know, to save the planet. You know, Princeton, you know, if you look around Princeton, it's a huge building campaign. It's all funded by green money. You know, it, uh, it's not really green money. It's your money and my money. It's taxpayers' money and it's debt, you know, that future generations will be saddled with. Uh, so the, uh, you know, there's a, this nice quote from Pushkin, you know, where, where there's a trough, there will be hogs. And that's what we're seeing. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So I've got a little bit of a philosophy I want to run by you. Um, you're familiar with Y2K, okay, when, when the, all the computers turned from 1999 to year 2000. Yeah. All this money was spent on all these computer systems and everybody was freaking out. I, I feel like this green energy thing is almost like that. It's it, it, you know, it's almost like we're throwing tons of money at something that doesn't warrant this attention. Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah, no, I think you, you are right. But the big difference is Y2K was stupid. You know, South Korea, for example, didn't do anything about Y2K. Nothing happened in South Korea. So they saved all that money. <laughs> I know Princeton spent an arm and a leg, you know, preparing for Y2K, and uh, I couldn't see we got very much for it. Uh, I was in the administration then, so I know what happened. <laughs> and uh, But the difference is it, it really wasn't that expensive, you know. It was a one-time expense for a few years, and uh, here we're talking about trillions of dollars, and we're talking about impoverishment of Western society, and we're talking about destruction of the environment you know you cover all of these green fields with black solar panels and all you know the cattle on a thousand hills are replaced by windmills on a thousand hills you know it, it's just outrageous what's going on or well in <laughs> so i need to ask you this because you're obviously a brilliant guy so why do you think so many of these car companies went I mean, at some point, obviously, a couple of them went to hybrids, but then they really just took the leap and went to EVs. And for example, Ford is on pace to lose $5 billion this year. I think they lost $3 billion last year. They're, they're, they're cutting way back on what they're doing. And in fact, they're going to be coming out with a whole bunch of models that are hybrids. So I don't understand why people, why do they go straight to hybrids and have, have you know, I, I, I have a, a friend of mine owns an EV and Getting around the city and, and one of those is fantastic. But if you want to go long distance, you know, in a state like Texas where I live or in Colorado, Wyoming, it's almost impossible. Yeah, well, the 
car companies in America, GM, for example, is bailed out by the government. So it's basically a government, you know, uh, welfare, in, industrial welfare. <laughs> so there's not very much they can do. You know, they don't have the freedom that Ford does or that Toyota does. Uh, hybrid uh, makes a lot of sense for suburban uh, driving and in, in areas with very high gasoline prices. You have to pay a little more for the hybrid, but, uh, you know, if you have got high gas prices and you do a lot of stop and start driving, it makes sense. But you can drive all across Texas on a hybrid. There's no problem. You've got a gas tank like anyone else. It's just that you get better mileage because you have regenerative braking. You know, when you brake, you don't turn the energy into heat. You recharge the battery. <laughs> so... You know, I, I wouldn't buy a, a hybrid myself. I think the payback time is too long, but you, you can make the case, uh, especially in, say, California, where gasoline prices are very high. You know, I, I would think twice before uh, deciding between straight combustion engine or a, a hybrid. You know, it might make sense there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I don't want to take much more of your time real quickly. If people are out there watching this and they want to learn more on their own to, to kind of justify in their mind what they think about the green energy situation, climate change, where would you recommend they go look? Well, I would suggest that they look at the website of the uh, CO2 Coalition. It's easy to find if you go to the internet and type in CO2 Coalition. It'll come up and usually the first... Uh, link is uh, to the coalition and then there are four or five pages of venomous attacks on us so that's a good sign we must be doing something right to get <laughs> to get all of that that attention but uh, on the website you'll find uh, various degrees of sophistication if you're a propeller headed engineer uh, like me <laughs> You can find stuff that will challenge you. And if, if you're an ordinary person, you know, who likes poetry, and you will also find things that uh, you can read and, and profit from. So there, there's a, a, a mix there for, for every type of person. Fantastic. Well, well, I, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for educating us, because that's really what you did. So people, they want to learn more about the Wyoming Liberty uh, and what's going on in the state of Wyoming, wyliberty.org, and be sure to sign up for our newsletter. Will, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mike, and thanks for what you're doing. <laughs> thank you.